Nevada Governor Joe Lombardo announced late last night he has called for a second special session. Now, they were supposed to get this done earlier in the week and see if they wanted to give public money to the to a stadium, a ballpark for the A's. But it did not it did not get done then. So people were wondering, well, why did the lawmakers get cold feet? Would there be another special session called? It looks like there is going to be a second special session called. Now, the the bill calls for nearly $400 million in public financing in taxpayer money with tax credits and other stuff to get this thing built and it comes from it comes from the public sector and I, I would just say this throughout my banging the drum about this it has never been about anti Las Vegas fans never what we have seen from the the Golden Knights runs to the Stanley Cup Finals, their playoff runs, and now this one, which is two wins away from a Stanley Cup, is that the Vegas fans that that have bought in are phenomenal. They have supported the Golden Knights better than anybody could have ever figured. And it's not so much so with the Raiders, partially because the Raiders aren't that good. They're not nearly as good as as the Golden Knights. I think partially because the Golden Knights are of Vegas. They were an expansion team for Vegas. They were the first ones. The Raiders are not of Vegas yet, haven't been very good, but it's fine. You know, those that's only eight to nine regular season home games a year. You have a lot of road fans that come in for one road trip. The stadium's beautiful. That is what it is. I have always felt, though, that the love that we see for the Golden Knights would not transfer to the A's because A, it's not an expansion team. It's not theirs. There's something different when it's yours instead of just adopting it from somewhere else. B, the Knights were the first ones in. And C, and this is the most important part, because if the A's were winners, I don't doubt that Vegas would would come out for them. If the A's were winners and you had road fans coming in because they want to come see their team. Pirates fans want to come to Vegas or Yankee fans want to come to Vegas or Dodgers fans want to come to Vegas or whatever. Certainly you'd get fans there, but I don't think the love would translate because the ownership is so poor. Dan Snyder's a good example in Washington. Okay. Unable to get a stadium deal done in, in D.C. because he's crappy as a politician. He's just, he's no good in the room. You know people that can walk into a room and talk anybody's ear off. You, you've seen people succeed, climb their way up because people just generally like them. They're, they're good in the room. They're good dinner conversation. They're good at the bar. They're good when they're talking to your wife or your husband. You know, you just, you like having them around and, and then they ask you for a favor and it, you know, it's hard to say no. Dan Snyder sucks at that. He is, he's got a a little man's problem. He's got Napoleon complex. He's, he is a guy who's a bully. He has been um, manipulative. He's been stubborn. He's nobody wants to deal with him. Nobody likes him. So he's been unable to get a deal done. If Dan Snyder said, you know what? I can't get a deal done in Washington. So I'm moving the team. I'm going to San Antonio. I'll get a stadium built there. I, I can't do business around here. I'm leaving. We're, we're going to Birmingham. I, I'm, we're taking Washington to Birmingham, okay? We're going to be the Birmingham commanders. They'd be all fine and good. But those residents might want a professional football team. But they certainly wouldn't want to give money to that owner because he's such he's a debacle. And... It wouldn't change how dysfunctional the franchise was. That's what is happening with the A's. I I just say this as a a warning to Vegas. You don't just get a baseball team if you vote for this or your lawmakers say yes to this. You don't, it's not just about, oh, we get, we get a major league baseball team. That's fun. We get 81 home dates a year. 
You get that baseball team and that owner. And that's a very important stipulation here. You don't get to de deconnect, disconnect rather, decouple from John Fisher and Dave Cavill. You don't they come with that's that's the deal. That's the bit. And I warn you, they are a mess. Not only are they untrustworthy, not only are they erratic, they're bad in the room. Nobody wants to deal with them. They're just bad. John Fisher inherited all of his wealth through his parents. His parents created the gap. He inherited all that money. He didn't have any great business sense. He's not great in any type of negotiations. He's actively kind of tried to prove, I'm not just mommy and daddy's boy, but he's done nothing successful in doing so. You get that attitude. Dave Cavill's just been two-faced the entire time. He's been a mess. He's hid. He has, he has refused to do interviews. Nobody wants Fisher, Cavill. They, they don't want to do interviews. They don't want to answer questions. They just want to hide and find handouts. If Major League Baseball said, we really like the potential of Vegas and we want to give them an expansion franchise, I'd say, absolutely, they are more than deserving. But what you have in Bill Foley, you have to remember, Vegas. That's why the Golden Knights are so good, they're so healthy, they're so stable, they've been to two Stanley Cup Finals. Your ownership is amazing. Your ownership is focused. Your ownership is successful. Your ownership has done it on an, a lot of levels. Foley's been a big philanthropist. Foley has focus and drive and success. Foley has put the pieces in place to be winners. If you say yes to this public funding, if your lawmakers say yes to this public funding, you are paying out of your pocket to fund a nightmare of an owner, and you don't get a functional franchise. You get a dysfunctional franchise. They won't be better. They, they won't be winners. They're still run by the same lunkheads. I don't, I wasn't surprised that lawmakers hesitated the other night on saying yes to the funding. Because I think what they have to balance is we're going to, we're going to, allocate resources that could go to a lot of other places like schools, like infrastructure, like transportation, what have you. And yes, it sizzles and it's hot and it's, we bring baseball to Vegas. But if the team stinks or the team's dysfunctional and you're having to give favors to problematic people, it doesn't look so great anymore on your resume. And that's why I think they hesitated at first. Now, there's going to be another special session. I just think if you're Vegas, you say no to this. And you say, we've got a great thing. We've got a great bid for an expansion franchise. And Rob Manfred has said we want to expand. They're going to expand anyway. Wait till you get your owner. Wait till you get an owner that you can trust. Expansion owners are way better because they've been vetted a million times. They haven't inherited the team. They haven't kind of stumbled into ownership. You've got to win the right. You've got to win the bid. John Fisher could never win an expansion team. There's no way. He's a nightmare. I would encourage your lawmakers, Vegas, to say no to this and wait for your expansion team because it's a lot more likely that's going to be a healthy organization than this one. And what Rob Manfred should do is see the writing on the wall. If this thing falters, which I hope it does, because Vegas deserves a functional franchise and Fisher doesn't deserve a team, is I hope Manfred sees more egg on the face of the A's that they can't get it done in Oakland and they can't get it done in Vegas and say, you're going to have to sell. The same way the NFL's forcing Dan Snyder to sell. Now, there's no scandal there, but... Owners can vote other owners out. That can't happen. A lot of embarrassment in Oakland with the A's about how that ownership group can't get anything done anywhere. That's where this needs to go. Vegas needs to say, no, we're not going to fund Richie Rich, who's never done anything in his life to earn t taxpayer money. Look at this team. It's going to lose 130 games. You want to inherit that team? 
And this idea, well, as soon as they get to Vegas, they'll start spending money. Okay, where's the evidence that they would do that well? Where's the evidence that they would do that? We just saw a power grab financially with the PGA Tour and Live. And Monaghan said one thing and then did another. And what happened? The money changed. Oh, oh okay, well, okay, things, think, we, we can work with this. Now, do you trust the PGA Tour leadership after what they just sold you? Do you think that suddenly they're now upright citizens? Same thing with John Fisher. You think the moment he gets to Vegas, you can trust him? You think the moment he gets to Vegas, suddenly, oh, well, I just, I, I found the light. You don't want to give that guy cash. You don't give that guy cash. You wait for your expansion team. I bet you, you get one. And then Rob Manfred says, enough is enough with this ownership group. Sell to Joe Lacob, who owns the Warriors. He wants to buy the, the, the A's. He's got a standing offer for him. Let him own it. A's stay in Oakland. The A's have good ownership. Vegas gets an expansion team. They have good ownership. And we've cleaned our hands of the problem, which really is Fisher and Cavill. It is not that they can't get a ballpark done. They can't get a ballpark done because they stink. Not because the cities that they're dealing with stink. 